All right, so I'm really grateful we get this opportunity to be able to share a little bit of our story and our experience. Um, the four of us had the opportunity uh, of running the 2022 uh, Ragnar in Colorado, the Colorado Trail Ragnar. And, uh, and it was an experience that truly built our brotherhood and changed our, our faith, changed our life, and, uh, and inspired us just to be able to, to do even greater things. And um, so we're just really grateful that we get this opportunity to be able to share a little bit of this story. My name's Will, and I am runner number three. Yeah, so um, my name's Julio, and um, I'm runner, was four? Number four. Number four. For Closer. Most of the time it was four. But um, <clears throat> yeah, we, we just we just um, felt like we wanted to do something as, as, as a group, you know, four of us. Um, I remember when the idea came to mind. We've done this in the past. We've done this really in the past, but mm -hmm. it was just, it was eight of us. In 2017 and 18, before COVID, we did it every year. And um, this year, we just felt that if we're going to go somewhere, we're going to really need to challenge ourselves mm -hmm. and, and um, pack light. So we said, okay, let's do the 120. But with eight of us, it's going to be a yeah, job well done. But we felt that, you know, four of us, it's going to be, yeah, job well done. Mm -hmm. but, but a different job well done. Like, mm -hmm. We were really tested. So yeah. um, it's a great experience. And it's, it's, um I'm just happy that I shared it with these guys. How you doing? My name is uh, Dario, and I am still trying to process um, the fact that I ran 30 plus miles of this 120 with these amazing men. Uh, this is my first time running this amount of mileage, unlike them. And uh, I can tell you something uh, from the bottom of my heart that uh, the first thing that came to mind was, Kai, when you're on top of the mountain, mm -hmm. there's no shape, form, or fashion that you can deny that he exists. Mm -hmm. That's a little bit about me. I'm a deep guy. Stay tuned. All right. Uh, my name is Manolo. Uh, I was num uh, running number two. Uh, I was the local guy. So I don't know to have these brothers back visiting me and uh, and just be <clears throat> be here. And we used to do this when I was over there, and uh, and it was like really excited to do this. And when they called me, I was like, "Hey, you want to do this?" I was like, 30 miles." I was like, "Wow!" It's like you're pushing me to the limit, but I will do it because I miss you guys. I, I want to run with with my old brothers and uh, and have fun. And that's what we did in Colorado. So, yeah, number runner number two. Mm -hmm. hey, hey, Manolo, did you say the local guy or the local guy? <laughs> Both. <laughs> local. Local. <laughs> A.K.A. Matador. Matador. And that, that, that's a fact. Manolo is a matador. Yeah. And he comes from a line of matadors. That's right. So these mountains were a joke to him. Yeah. Yeah. He, he has no fear, man. So we're super, super grateful. Manolo took great care of us. Not only did he run all of the legs, but he drove us there, drove us back, took care of us. His family hosted us. I mean, uh, just super grateful for Manolo. Absolutely. What was that? It was a four hour drive. Yep. Going and coming. So eight hours. And after that, after the race, he automatically got out of his car, met his wife, Drove with her to the airport and took them by plane. He didn't fly it, but I wouldn't be surprised if he could to their uh, destination for a month and then came back to go to work. So, Manolo, you're the hero of this whole Ragnar to me. No, nah. <laughs> no, you guys. First day they came. Well, the second day I took them to climb some stairs and to get acclimated with the uh, elevation in Colorado. And they did well. So. I know you guys are the heroes. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, so just to give you a little bit of background. So we, the three of us, we all live at sea level. And um, the Mantador, Manolo, uh, he lives a mile above sea level. And uh, so the, the elevation was really a big challenge. Um, so we, we did a little bit of training here with, um, you know, masks to kind of try to prepare ourselves a little bit for the elevation. But it was no joke. I mean, once we got there, we could feel the difference when we flew into Denver. And uh, like Manolo mentioned, uh, we ran uh, a, a set of staircases, which, which was a mile up. That was the uh, Manitou, it's the Manitou stair. Manitou incline. The and Manitou we did climb. not run them. We we walked up them to be but very I don't know clear. the staircases. Because no, staircases they're not staircases. Like they're actually- That joker went like that. Yep. Yeah, they're not staircases. They're, they're railway ties. Yeah, that, so, that are high, high, like high knees going up. And just to be clear, these two guys, they, they did, walk slash jog up. I walk slash climbed up. 
So by about halfway up, I was uh, on my hands and knees just climbing up because at that elevation, you're really functioning with about a third of your lung capacity. Um, so it's, I mean, so you, you're, you're feeling it. Uh, then when we got to the top, uh, we were able to, you know, come on back down. And, uh, and then the next day. So I, I would say, um, to answer your question, though, why did we choose um, Denver? Well, when it was challenging, you know, the elevation we knew was mm -hmm. we were going to test ourselves. And um, the second, we, well, the primary reason was it, it fell on Will's birthday. We said, let's do this for your birthday. Let's not wait for another race. Let's do this one. But we knew when we saw that one, we were like, yeah, you know, it, was, it was kind of like an uncomfortable silence. Like, yeah, yeah, let's do that one. But it, not a yeah, yeah, like an excitement. It was like, yeah, yeah, let's, yeah, let's do that one. So, it, but, <laughs> but it was good. It was a perfect, I think it was a perfect um, course for us to run because mm -hmm. there wasn't one of us that can look back and say, oh, that was nothing. You know, we it all got hard. tested. Yeah. It was incredibly hard. It was by far for me, I know, the hardest thing I've physically done. Mm. And um, and uh, because of the combination of the elevation, the heat, the cold. Um, the next day we got a chance to go run in the woods. And uh, I, I was still feeling the, the, the environment, just trying to get acclimated. And then the day after that, um, Manolo took us uh, to Pikes Peak. And that was a whole different experience. I know for me... I'm personally scared of heights. And so Pikes Peak is 14,115 feet above sea level. I live at sea level and uh, climbing up the, the, the mountain just in the car alone, like Manolo has no fear. He was blazing up the mountain on with no railings. At, and m most of the places have no railings. And he was just going in gear with his, with his Land Rover and blazing up the mountain. And uh, that that stuff was uh, wild. While while Dario was taking pictures, <laughs> hanging out of the car, I mean, like all out there taking all sorts of video. That 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 junk was wild. So I just wanted to give you a little bit of the strategy that we had going into this. Yeah. So on Monday, uh, we we landed on Monday. I believe that was the sixth, if I'm correct. Mm -hmm. Monday the sixth, we landed, and it was already past midnight when we landed. Uh, Tuesday morning, uh, we woke up. We were, I mean, Monday when we got there. Technically, we got there Tuesday. We left here Monday, uh, D.C. area. We got there Tuesday, and uh, it was very early. It was like one something. By the time we hit the rack, it was like three. Mm -hmm. We we I know for a fact. I told Julio we weren't breathing right already. It, mm -hmm. it was tough because Manolo lives at seventy five hundred elevation feet. Mm -hmm. um, so Tuesday uh, was the test. We 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 thought very quickly. We had to think very quickly of. We can't just lay around and wait for, for mm -hmm. the day. Mm -hmm. So the plan was, let's try to get as much gear as possible. So we started to prepare. Julio and I, we were kind of on the same page saying different words, but we're like, we got to get up higher because where we're going to run is going to be all the way up, I think, at 9,000 feet. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So the concept is, if we're at 7,500 feet, can we go higher and then come back down that, that, that same night and then keep doing that until race day? So Manolo had it all planned out for us before we got there he reserved uh, a spot for us to climb the Manitou Incline, which again was built over 2,678 um, railway ties. Uh, that, that started our journey. That, that very moment, those first 10 steps for me, the first 10 railway uh, ties that I climbed, uh, Julio's then on the money. They, they're not 12 inches, they're not nine inches. They can go from, us, from two inches all the way to 24 inches in length and height. So, so they're really making you work. And that's how they do. A, a, what happens is by taking short steps for a while, you're taking short steps then you're taking long uh, steps. So it's breaking it up, the monotony. You don't want to keep taking the same steps and mm -hmm. stay with me as I go here. So we did that. And then we decided, Julio and I got to the top and uh, we decided to take some cool pictures. At least I flexed once or twice. Um, and then we decided to take a 3.5 mile hike down the trail. And that's when I uh, uh, came face to face with some of the wildlife in Colorado, which I thought was baby elk, but to my knowledge now, it's uh, mule deer, which um, thanks for Julio, because at one point they were literally in our way. Like, and I'm like, Julio, so I guess, uh, what do we do? And he would just walked up, he started walking in the direction and saying something. It didn't sound like words, I couldn't hear. I was just making sure that the other three on the hill coming behind it did not run us over. But thank the Lord Jesus Christ, he cleared our path, um, use uh, Julio as a tool. Mm -hmm. uh, so now this is day 
this is Tuesday. Wednesday, we decided that we were going to drive up to Pikes Peak again in efforts of strategy and preparation. So that's 14,000 plus feet in the air. Manolo with his skills and his Range Rover that have many gears. And it's not to put light on the fact that it's a Range Rover, but what its capability is. Mm -hmm. And thanks for those engineered capabilities mm -hmm. to my engineer Matador buddy over That's there. Right. We were able to climb this mountain with this vehicle. And these gentlemen are not exaggerating. These are some of uh, the, you know, first of all, I'm going to put them on the spot. They're afraid of heights. I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. And they, they, they looked at fear. Uh, kind of in the face because literally they were like this at some points mm -hmm. and I didn't know if they were joking so I had mm -hmm. to stop and say you guys joking they said no but they did it they conquered their fear on the way up there yeah. uh, I made a mistake I got very excited once we got up there and I wanted to get a selfie stick so I decided that I was going to run back to the car and immediately five and a half steps literally <laughs> felt like my brain was being crushed I could not breathe now mind you I suffered from asthma here and there so I was like this is it but thank the Lord, you know, I did some serious praying. Again, this whole trip, I was very close to God. As mm -hmm. close as, you know, quiet time, right? When we talk about quiet time, we had a lot of quiet time. Yep. And it was amazing. Uh, so there we go. We're back down, Pikes Peak. The next day, um, we went running. And, and actually, that same day, it was Wednesday, we went for uh, what we thought was going to be seven-mile run, but it ended up being 5.5. .5. Then we relaxed, showered, and went to Pikes Peak. Uh, so Thursday, we're driving four hours. Manolo is taking us there. We're going through more mountains. <laughs> we went through Independence <laughs> Pass, which yep. was amazing. Yep, it was our pit stop. And we get to the site, and we had to set up camp. So here we are. It's Thursday. We're there. Adrenaline is pumping, and now we have to set up camp. Again, thanks to Manolo, he was well prepared. He had 10 sleeping bags, all of this. So we did that, but, you know, we, we, we had some thinking of our own, and we were like, we're going to get a hotel. And thank God for <laughs> hotel because as prepared as you think you could be you're never prepared but with god and with jesus everything is possible i'm telling you if you're going in the right path it's possible so here we are we set up we went to try to get a good night's sleep but luckily julio and i don't sleep we just realized that and we basically stood up all night i think we fell asleep a total of like two hours throughout mm -hmm. the whole time and julio what did you say i can't sleep i just want to get this over with and i'm like what I wanted to say to him, which I was holding back, was this is anxiety. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, in my mind, I'm like, I'm just going to leave it to God mm -hmm. from here. Mm -hmm. um, so Friday morning, we went to check in and the race began. I was the first runner, by the way. And after that race began, I knew it was real. Mm -hmm. It got real, real quick because they had, what was it, yellow, mm -hmm. green, and red. Mm -hmm. These were the colors of the trails that we were running. Mm -hmm. Red being 6.8, uh, I believe. Mm -hmm. And this, the least mile is 3.8. Mm -hmm. However... What we thought was easy was actually one of the most difficult uh, mountain climbs with, uh, um, I forgot what you call those things, switchbacks. And when, mm -hmm. when, whenever you saw a switchback coming, you knew to mentally prepare because you were going to get taxed. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to go over that. I hope that was pretty quick and I'm going to pass it over to Will so he could talk a little bit more about those quiet times. Yeah, I mean, there was, it was definitely, you know, the scripture talks about praying continually. Man, we're praying continually. I mean, praying continually for sure. Uh, just in the preparation. But once the race started, um, you know, my first leg was the 6.7 uh, that got the handoff around 11 o'clock. So it was the heat of the day. Uh, that day, I think it was 80 or 90 degrees. The next day, it was 101 uh, degrees. So you're going up, um, you know, 41 degree elevation, uh, four miles straight up, and then 2.7 miles straight down. And, uh, and it literally was going up the mountain. Um, the, you know, the first part of that leg, you know, we're running, doing road runs until we hit the, the mountain trail itself. And uh, once we hit the mountain trail, it was wild. You know, they told you every stick that you see, assume that it's a snake. And I, of course, I, on my first run, I saw a snake and I let that snake pass. And I heard a lot of snakes as I was running, you know, they're rattlesnakes, you can hear them. So they're all around you. So there were rattlesnakes there and they, you know, they're mountain lions, they're bears, uh, they're coyotes. And uh, when we're at Pikes Peak, uh, you know, they had a coyote like pelt, like, you know, like the back of a coyote to the, like on display. Well, sure enough, on that same first run on my trail, there was a coyote pelt. It wasn't on display. Something <laughs> ate that coyote and left the skin on the trail. And I was like, 
what eats a coyote? <laughs> <laughs> and so, man, I got to tell you, I was praying during the day um, because you didn't know what could come out and get you during the day. But I was praying even more when I was back on that trail again at one o'clock in the morning, because a part of that trail, you know, it's it, you just have enough space to run. There are a lot of sheer drop offs. Um, but a part of that trail, you're in the thicket and you can feel when stuff's watching you. And there was stuff watching us as we were going. <laughs> you could feel it, you know. And so all we could really rely on was God to get us through. And so I definitely uh, prayed like never before. And, and, you know, I know for me, kind of one of the big takeaways for me is that the God of the mountain is the same as the God of the valley. And Amen. I just realized that, you know, if I trust God to protect me here at sea level, I'm going to trust God to protect me at 9,000 feet. And uh, that was that's easy to say in kind of recounting this, but when I was going through it, I mean, I just was like, please help me to believe that you're the same here as you are there. And, uh, cause it was, it was, it was challenging, but it was by far, it was really, really amazing to do it with my brothers. I'm just, that I think is the thing that was the best. Yeah. I would say, um, so the race took us 28 hours. I think it was. Mm -hmm. So to put things in perspective, you don't, so you run every, every fourth, you're four, there's four runners, so you, it's, you're cycling through, you're cycling through. And um, it's really, right when you try, you think you're going to get some rest, it's time for you to run again. Mm -hmm. And so you're running 20 hour, 28 hours straight. So it's not like, you know, at 2 in the morning, you can say, I'm going to take a three-hour nap mm -hmm. and just wake up and run my, my loop. It was nonstop. But the thing about it is, like Will said, in, in, you know, in the morning it was somewhat cold. Middle of the day, it starts getting high around the middle, you know, around noon to two o'clock it's 90 to 100 degrees mm -hmm. and then at night it gets cold again the one thing is that I, I would say you know i really had trust and confidence that you know the next man up was going to be there like yeah. i knew once my leg was done yeah. dario was going to be there when dario was done manolo was going to be there. it wasn't like we had to like herd cats hey get out <laughs> get out the tent i need you to go run your lap mm -hmm. your loop these guys were all, were all about it it felt good because it gives you that extra motivation to um you know, you're not down. You're not. How about if this guy goes down? It was more so like, let me finish this, pass it on. Let's keep, let's keep this thing going. So I, I'm, I'm glad I ran it with these guys because there was never a doubt in my mind that, that they were just gonna give up or use some type of excuse not to continue going. So for me, that's what really made it special is that these guys were there giving it all, and you can see it when they were done. They were spent, and even trying to sleep, it's like, we, by the end of the, by the end of the day, um, I think on. When we were done, I weighed myself. I was 12 pounds less, just 12 pounds lighter. And a lot of that just had to do with dehydration, lack of water, and things like that. But for me, that 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 made the experience. It's just running with these guys, being dependent on each other. You know, everyone running their miles. You know, uh, we made sure we all had water. We gave each other um, electrolytes. Mm -hmm. You know, we pretty much fed each other. It, it, it's it's a brotherhood that, I, I tell you, it's, the last time I seen something like that was when I was in the Marine Corps overseas. So um, just want to thank you guys for making me feel that, you know, that camaraderie that's been quite some time since I've really felt that. So None. thank you. None. hundred percent. How about for you, Manolo? Uh, <clears throat> I think my greatest fear was that uh, you guys were coming and I need, I was need to make sure that you guys didn't get hurt. I mean, through high elevation or running or not adjusting and, uh, so I did a lot of praying about you guys because I want you to have this race as as a, as a good uh, as, as a good experience. And uh, so I don't know uh, we did different activities for you guys to uh, acclimate to the weather and to the dryness of Colorado. And uh, and then on the race, uh, I was impressed how you guys performed. Right, like you guys went up, came back, and they're like, "Oh yeah, I feel it." But you keep going. You know what I mean? that didn't stop you and i think uh like as Daru was saying it's like hey i learned about will and julio about heights uh getting scared on heights or but it was the trip was so amazing that i think we learned about each other uh more than if we just did something i don't know like hey let's go out and do something for for a day right it was like experience like and now we have that for forever right and uh and i'm glad that i had i was part of that team and you guys came and we have fun so and 
luckily you guys came back as how you came here and the sisters i'm sure they're 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 good if if i send you back wrong oh man they will kill me <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's 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 for sure man so we want to make sure everybody was fine and and healthy and manolo you really did such a great job providing such incredible hospitality to us man and and looking out for us and it was just uh it really it that's what made it was the brotherhood the brotherhood and the friendship you know who would you guys what advice would you give to anybody that's that's thinking about trying to do something like this or just maybe thinking about looking at their at their neighbor and wanting to do something big not like like you know said not like doing something like you know maybe going camping for a day but maybe taking on a real adventure like you guys did. what advice would you give if they're watching you guys right now and knew about what you were doing, what would you say to them? Yeah, the first thing I would say to them is that if you're married, you, you gotta have, uh, you gotta pray to the Lord, and, and and you gotta ask that you have things in order and mm -hmm. that you have a a good support group because um, it's all about the mindset. But for me, I'm a family man. I'm married with three kids, and you know my wife's a registered nurse. She works very hard, so for me it was a lot of pressure because I couldn't come back home injured. That was number one. So I did everything I possibly could to prepare including making sure she had buy-in on this adventure. Deep down inside, I know she didn't want me to do it, but because she loves me and she supports me, she knows mm -hmm. I needed this. And I was very verbal and I took my time in explaining to her and articulating to her how important this was for me. Mm -hmm. So that before she said anything, she had the information she needed to properly mm -hmm. support me. Which, you know, it does take a level of time in some relationships to get to, to that. But this was something that I really wanted. So I had to pray on how to talk to my wife and make sure she had buy-in. So number one, I think everyone can contest to this. Without your support group, um, this would have not been possible. My wife supported me um, through all the tough training that I put myself through. My daughter that's 13, Angelina, even my three-year-old saw me running and try to mimic that. I know my infant is too young, but he's a little angel and the smiles help a lot. So the first thing to prepare is finding a support group. Although your support group may not go with you on the adventure, in some shape, form, or fashion, they can help to prepare you mentally, physically, and spiritually. So that's what I have. That's my bit of advice, how I feel I was able to be successful and give it 110%. Of course, there was a guilt because I'm, I'm in my 40s and I got a young family, like I said, from infants to 13. So while I was there enjoying an amazing time, my mind and heart were also back home making sure that my family was okay. And so, you know, there's a selfishness that goes into this and you have to understand that. But that selfishness, you have to give to God because it was about the brotherhood. This was about more than just a run to me. It was about inspiring others and moving them to get off, you know, the seat, get off the couch, as Julio says, and do more physically, mentally, and spiritually. So that's, that's my advice is when you find a challenge, pray on it. Find your support group and start preparing. There is no tomorrow, only today. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. Yes, yeah, so I would say just to echo what um, Dario said, is um, the, the biggest thing is, is the, the family support. Mm -hmm. You know, same thing. I, I mean, I have two little kids, um, one and four years old, and, and my wife, is, she takes care of, of her mother. So it's, it's a full house, and we're all, act, you know, we're all professional adults, work a full-time job. And... Um, but I did get the opportunity to pray with my daughter every other night. You know, when we had a chance, we, we prayed and put her to sleep. Same routine as back home. So that felt good. And they supported me. And, you know, I know it was tough. So I'm, I'm thankful for that support. But um, I would say the biggest advice I'll give you is just do it, man. I mean, it mm -hmm. doesn't have to be a, a 120 miles. It can be, um, you know, you can go hiking, you can go golfing, whatever it is. But um, right. the key thing is you do got to get off the couch and, um, when, when, when you say, I want to go to Colorado, the next step was what I told these guys, let's have a Zoom call and let's start buying the tickets. Because once you buy the tickets, you get, you get buy-in. Mm -hmm. You know, there's skin in the game. You know, they yep. come on paid for it. So it's no longer, you know, let me let me check back. So right. we were solid. We bought the tickets. We got the hotel. We knew where we were going. We started the training. So from that point on, you have buy-in and now you lose your money, you know. Yeah. So um, we had that. And um, last, I would say that um, I really wanted to make sure everyone was safe, man. Um, I mean, because yeah. the last thing you want is to come home and, you know, Dario had a stroke, Will passed out, you know, mm -hmm. I got a broken leg and mm -hmm. it's never going to happen again. Mm -hmm. So we did some praying, man. And I remember Dario told me when, you, when you're when you done with the red loop at the very top, take a moment and, and pray. He said, you know, take a moment, take it in. 
because the, the last time I ran, it was at night, so I didn't see anything. So I was up there. I, I prayed for a little bit, and I, and I prayed for these guys. I prayed for the families. I prayed for, for my family and the support they're giving us. And most importantly, I pray for our health, man. It's like, God, you saw us through this. We're all alive. We're all healthy. We're good. You know, amen. I'm ready to do this again. Mm -hmm. So, um, again, just get off the couch and do it. Yeah, absolutely. What, how about for you, Manolo? Uh, I think when you say yes to people and, like, and then you commit to something, I think that's when it gets real. Yeah, Julio says, like, yeah, you buy the ticket. But <clears throat> I think I had to buy a ticket, right? So I was not out of the pocket of something, but I make a promise to my brothers that I was going to run and I was going to have fun with them. And I just had to do it. So I, I didn't have any, any way out of this. And so when, when I received the call from Julio, like, hey, you want to do this? I was like, I think about it a little. I'm like, okay, let me think about it. And then let me talk to my wife and make sure everything is good. And, and then I say yes. And it's just the commitment. You know what I mean, it's your word and... And then you just you just have to do it. Yeah, we choose 30 miles, <laughs> but it can be a smaller mile. Maybe you, you do like a 5K or a 10K or something like that, but you just have to do it. Uh, I think that's like the big step. Just you just have to say yes and, and, and go for it. Uh, I know it was a little challenge for all the families. Like at least I was, I, I was at home with my family, but uh, these brothers left their home. You know what I mean? I like the wives had to deal with the kids and everything with the family. They have some issues. I mean, it's just, but they did it. They came and they spent like four or five days here and it was awesome. So yeah, that's my advice. Just do it. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I echo that sentiment. I think it's important that you do hard things and uh, you're not going to build real bonds unless you do hard things. And that hard thing is whatever is hard for you. I mean, it could be a hike. It could be a run. It could be swimming, it could be biking. Um, it, it could be that you decide to do martial arts together. Whatever the thing is, I think what we have to recognize is we, we live in a world where there's a lot of difficulty. And honestly, I think where we have a lot of soft men and we actually need men to be strong and we need men to be uh, tough. And in a tough world, we need tough men. And I think uh, particularly for us, who are you know, followers of Jesus, we've got to model the faith that we're professing. Uh, Jesus had the stamina to be able to endure everything that he endured. You know, Julio always talks about this. I mean, Noah was chopping wood at hundreds of years old. You know, Abraham had incredible stamina to walk where he needed to walk. Moses had incredible stamina. All the heroes we have in the scriptures, they are known for their incredible stamina and conviction. And, uh, and I think we've got to recognize it in as much as we need to have a sound biblical understanding of things. We also need to have a real practical understanding of what it looks like to really be brothers. And, um, and on this trip, that's what I saw. And, and on the, the journeys that I've been with other brothers, um, you know, and other sisters, that's what I've seen. And so I, I just want to say for me, do it, you know, decide to do something. And do the thing that scares you the most. I will be completely honest with you. Uh, I, you know, I, without a doubt, I, as the weakest runner on, on, this, on this team, um, I was terrified uh, on the mountains, no question. I, I absolutely am afraid of heights. Um, I, I was uh, terrified when I started running up the mountain. I was like, I, I'm committing to this. And I, I'm not somebody, I, even though I'm afraid, I wasn't gonna quit. So I was like, I'm either gonna pass out or I'm gonna finish. It's going to be one or the other. And there were lots of moments there where I thought I'm going to pass out, you know, I mean, um, because the height, the heat. Um, but the truth is, I wouldn't trade any of the experiences that we had for anything in the world, because greatness only happens when you're willing to step out of your comfort zone. And so I'm I, my encouragement is don't just do it. And also don't make any excuses, no excuses. Don't make excuses for yourself. Uh, decide to actually step up and do something great. You yeah, know, with, hit them with that first Corinthians that, you know, the Apostle Paul writes uh, many letters. I believe it was 11. Mm -hmm. um, he wrote to the Corinthians, right, about the body. Right? Mm -hmm. hit, hit them with a little he, bit. Yeah, of yeah. You know, exactly. You know, in, in Corinthians, you know, it talks about the fact that, you know, that we are a body as Christians, you know, and the eye can't say to the hand, I don't need you. The ears can't say, you know, I don't need you. We actually need each other and we need each other as we're really trying to 
to, to, to run this race. And I think this experience helped us to see how we much need, we needed, needed each, each other. other. Like I needed, uh, to, you know, I, I needed Dario and I needed Manolo and I needed Julio to be able to give me water, to be able to give me a jacket if I needed it, to be able to give me a space in the tent if I needed it or some electrolytes, um, you know, or some encouragement. Um, we needed each other all throughout this. And so just really want to encourage everyone with everything that we were able to experience and able to see that God is real. And the God of the mountain is the same as the God of the valley. And fear, without a doubt, it's the mind killer. And so be willing to face your fears, knowing that when you do that, Jesus will be with you as you're going through it. And so really excited that we got this opportunity to be able to serve. Really grateful for Ragnar 2022. Looking forward to a lot more adventures together and uh, all the amazing ways that God works. Amen. I'm excited uh, that I was part of this team. Um, I knew we were going to have fun, but uh, the way the things went, it, it was just amazing. It was like, like I don't know. It, it's like, how can I say it? Like, I miss you, my brothers from the Virginia church, but having spent time with them for like a few days, being in my home and do activities and, and run 120 miles together, I think it was like, I don't know, it's just... It, it, I don't know. It makes me really happy uh, because I I miss the church so much over there, and uh, and having these friendships, this brotherhood is is amazing. And uh, and I'm I'm glad I was part of it. I'm glad I received Julio's call, and I'm I'm glad that you you guys had fun and nobody got hurt. And we just we just did it. You know I mean, thirty miles each. You know what I mean? And at the beginning, we're like, oh, that's a lot. But you know what I mean? And you run one and they're like, okay, I have five more. And then you run another one, I have four, right? And then I have the hard one and, and you did that one. And then it's like, okay, I, I have to do it again. So I think it's, it was just an amazing trip. And thank you, brothers. And uh, looking forward for another one. <laughs> that's right. I love you guys. Love you love too, you, man. Brother. It's awesome. Well, this was an incredible adventure. And we hope that more than anything else, if you learn anything from our story, you learn that it's important to do hard things and to do hard things together. So super grateful for Ragnar 2022 and 120 miles, uh, almost two miles above sea level. And uh, we're still alive to speak about it.